Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here for the very first time, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah and on this channel, I post a lot of content about anti-MLM. I have a massive anti-MLM playlist, which I always have linked here and down below for you. There's over 170 videos on it at this time, so super bingeable. And I would love it if you consider subscribing, if you find this content valuable and entertaining for you. You'll probably hear Zeke in the background already in this video, hopefully he settles down. But I think that today in particular, it's because I'm doing something I've never done before which is I'm filming this at 9.30 p.m. <laughs> Typically I get up, I get myself ready and I'm filming like first thing in the morning. That's what I did pre-baby times. Now that I have a newborn at home, her naps throughout the day are completely unpredictable. This is my second video back after maternity leave and I tried the first video back. I tried filming that one during the day, during her naps and it did not work out, okay? <laughs> that video ended up being like 45 minutes or something. It took me four hours. Four, count them four hours to film. <laughs> Cause I would sit down, I'd look at the monitor, she would be up again. I'd have to go back, settle her down. I would start filming again. She'd sleep for like 40 minutes. Then she would be awake and need to be fed and played with and put back down for another nap. It was a hot mess express. So I'm trying something a little different. I know for sure that once she goes down for the night at 9 p.m., she's gonna be asleep for at least a few hours. Knock on wood. Now that I just said that into the universe, I screwed myself, didn't I? I know it, I screwed myself. <laughs> Let's just say that this is the best chance we have in a 24 hour period that she's gonna go to sleep and stay asleep long enough for me to finish a video. All of that to say, wow, get to the point, Hannah, is that Zeke is very confused because at this time in the night, we're in bed. He sleeps on top of me in bed. <laughs> And so he's very much a part of like the whole bedtime routine situation. He's looking at me like, why are you not going to bed? It is actually bedtime. What are you doing, woman? Are you nuts? And you know what? I just might be because it has been so many hours since I've had any caffeine at all. I am running off of not very much sleep. I'm so tired. I want to be in bed, but I'm really hopeful that now that I've sat down, I've turned on the camera, we can film this all in one go like I like to. I won't be interrupted and all will be right in the world. <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? Anyway, sorry, much longer of an intro than I like to do. Today's video is an MLM horror stories. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so thankful for everyone who sent in the stories that I'm gonna read today. And this is your reminder that if you have your own horror story that you would like to send to me, the instructions for how to do that are in the description box of every video. Okay. Last thing before we read these stories today, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Paired. Paired is an app to improve communication, stay connected and deepen intimacy as a couple with a mission to improve the happiness of people in romantic relationships. My husband AJ and I have been using the Paired app for like over a year and a half now at this point, long, long, long before I ever worked with them as a sponsor. This is truly an app I love and I would recommend to anybody in a romantic relationship. Paired has questions, quizzes and games that you do with your partner through the app. And it's a super fun way to take care of your relationship and foster good communication skills. My favorite aspect of the app is that pretty much no matter what you're doing, whether it's a quiz or a game or a question, you both answer independently of one another and you can't see how the other person answered until you've both submitted your responses. Recently, AJ and I did a game in the app called You or Me. This is where you answer questions about who is more likely to do certain things within the relationship. And to my surprise, I'm looking at our results right now. I can put them on the screen here. We only got 60 percent of our answers matching, which I thought was kind of wild. I've been with this man for seven years. I've lived with him for three of those years and we only got 60% of these questions the same. And you know what? That's kind of the cool thing about paired. You might think you know certain things about your partner. You might think that you know how they would respond to certain questions. And sometimes when they don't always answer the way you expect them to, it makes for a really good conversation afterwards. Hence how the app is really good for improving your communication skills. Paired is great for all couples in any stage of relationship, whether you're just getting to know each other, or if you've been with your partner for years like I have, and you're still learning new things every single day. If you would like to try Paired to maintain and deepen your connection with your partner, you can click the link in the description box below, and that's going to give you 25% off Paired Premium. Thanks again, Paired, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's read some horror stories. This one says, hi Hannah, my name is Erica and you can say my name if you happen to decide to read this story in one of your videos. And if you do, I will definitely have a fangirl moment. <laughs> I will also warn, I like writing stories so this is going to be a bit of a novel. I found your channel about two months ago and yes, I have been binging your extremely bingeable anti-MLM playlist. I love your videos. Thank you so much for the amazing content and all the hard work that you put into it. That's very sweet, thank you. Pause, this cat 
This cat is driving me out of my skull today. I always kind of mix up the order of the stories when I'm editing, so I don't know where this is gonna fall in the lineup, but this cat will not shut up. <laughs> oh my goodness, I've let him out of the room, I've let him in the room, I've let him out of the room, I've let him back in five times now. I locked him in the other room with my husband and he annoyed the crap out of him. I just, I, I'm at a loss for words, okay? My deepest, sincerest apologies for his very poor behavior in this video. He's not usually this bad, believe me. So I'm going to preface this story with a trigger Are you done? So I'm gonna preface this story with a trigger warning of chronic illness, depression, anxiety, agoraphobia, and just a plain warning for the gross nature of the chronic illness I dealt with and still mildly deal with to this day. So I apologize to you and your audience in advance. I've always had issues with stomach, nausea, and vomiting in particular. In the past, it was very sporadic and it only affected me in high stress periods, though six years ago, this changed. It started off with chronic nausea, unending nausea that I started with trying to stave off with Altoids during my work day. Then when that became ineffective, I went to over-the-counter nausea meds. The over-the-counter nausea meds ultimately became ineffective around the time I started throwing up multiple times a day. I mean, upwards of seven to eight times a day. That sounds awful. I started on my two year journey of going to doctors and specialists and trying to figure out what on earth was wrong with me. Mind you, I had to quit working the job I loved working with animals at a kennel and get an office job because I was burning more calories than I was able to keep down. And I had several instances where I passed out or nearly passed out. When I mean that I went on a journey with doctors and specialists and a ton of blood work and testing done, I mean, it was a journey. Primary care physicians, PCPs, OBGYNs, endocrinologists, eating radioactive food to get tested for gastroparesis, a chiropractic neurologist, I also have chronic migraines, and an endoscopy, just to name a few. Though that was the best nap during the endoscopy I've ever had in my life. Twilight anesthesia is chef's kiss. <laughs> but I digress. With every appointment, I had to fight with my agoraphobia and my growing fear of going to the doctor. It was a constant battle between my panic attacks and my need to be fixed for my sanity's sake. It was actually the consultation appointment for setting up the endoscopy where I had the run-in with the Lavelle Hun. I'm about two years into constantly vomiting. I'm on round-the-clock anxiety meds. My nausea and vomiting is so bad at this point that I had to start taking a suppository form of the nausea medicine because I couldn't keep my medicine down. At this point, I'm desperate to have answers, be fixed, and just be normal again. I don't want any more band-aids. I just want this to be resolved. Absolutely. And you deserve for it to be resolved. The day of my appointment, I had a horrible migraine. I arrived with my husband and immediately apologized for wearing sunglasses inside because of having a migraine. And I asked if the light in the exam room could be turned off. The office staff was so kind and compassionate and complied. In comes the nurse after like a 30 minute wait. Side note, I was somewhat aware of MLMs, but I didn't know about the horrible side of them. I was an MLMer, but mostly just for the discounts I could get by selling them. I put that in quotations because I'm not a salesperson and honestly, Honestly, never made a sale. I was involved in Beachbody so I could get a discount on Beachbody On Demand and Cenogens, again, for the discount. Luckily, my uplines didn't care about what I did and they just let me do my own thing. And thankfully, I didn't lose a ton of money. Just what I thought was an appropriate small portion of my spending budget. Which is why I didn't think I had any horror stories until this one hit me yesterday watching one of your MLM horror stories about a camp nurse peddling essential oils. So the appointment went overall pretty well. I gave the rundown of my medical history to the nurse, how I've gained a ton of weight during this, what symptoms I'm dealing with, and she agrees that the endoscopy is a good route to go and sets up the appointment. My husband, bless his heart, also told her about all the research he's done for holistic approaches to helping combat my nausea and asked if she had any suggestions as she was a nurse practitioner. Sigh. <laughs> to which she replied with a pitch that was disguised as medical advice about this product that she's been using herself to help with her energy and lose weight. My husband 
husband was gung-ho and honestly I was too. Like I said, I was desperate and I trusted what this nurse was telling me. She gives us a business card, which I didn't look at until I got home that afternoon and it had her consultant ID number. We get home, we order it. And let me tell you, the shakes were disgusting. Great thing for someone with chronic nausea and vomiting. I had to add bananas and peanut butter to even be able to choke it down. The vitamins had a horrible aftertaste and the patches left this weird brown gunk on your arm when you took it off. When the second box came, cause I didn't realize I signed up for an auto shipment, I immediately canceled it. I have to say canceling was surprisingly easy for it being an MLM. Well, that's good at least. I just think it was disgusting that a nurse pitched a desperate person in her place of work and disguised it as medical advice to a person who was so obviously in poor health and desperate to be healthy once again. To this day, I still struggle with going to the doctor. Calling to even set up an appointment spirals me into a panic attack. Between being gaslit as much as I did and never getting the answers has truly made me fearful of going to the doctor. Thankfully, my nausea has eased up a bit, but I'm left with such an easily queasy stomach and a ton of food sensitivities. Thank you for taking the time to read this. And again, I apologize for the length. Please, please keep up the good fight against MLMs and letting your kitties have their spotlights in your videos. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if only we could have known that Zeke would be an absolute menace during your story. I'm so sorry about that. Thank goodness you seem to be one of the viewers that appreciates the cat cameo videos and is not incredibly irritated by them because wow, did he make some appearances during your story. Oh my goodness. Attached are photos of my kitties, Corin, the gray one, and Fish Sticks, the black one. Oh my God, Fish Sticks, so cute. Don't mind Fish Sticks claws in his photo. We clip them regularly. He just doesn't know how to cat very well, if that isn't evident from the photo. <laughs> he doesn't really know how to retract them. Oh my goodness, what a way to end your story. Thank you for the comedic relief. Your cats are adorable. And again, I really deeply apologize for mine. You know what's awful about this is that you listen to a different horror story video in which a nurse pitched an MLM product and you're like, oh yeah, that happened to me. <laughs> this should not be a common experience. This should not be something that people are like, oh yeah, I had that happen to me once where a nurse pitched me a product for her MLM. No, 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 not a good thing. And especially in your case where it seems like clearly this is a chronic issue, a terrible issue, something that I would wish upon my worst enemy, considering that I have a metaphobia, meaning that I have a fear, a phobia, an unrealistic phobia of vomiting. Like it kind of ruins my life a little bit. I should probably go to therapy for it. This is my worst nightmare. And I can only imagine how frustrating it is to go to professional after professional, specialist after specialist, have all kinds of testing done and not have any answers. I could not even imagine that struggle. Clearly a very vulnerable position for you to be in going to the doctor all the time and coming in contact with all kinds of healthcare professionals. And for one of those nurses to use her position and status to sell you Lavelle shakes, oh, it's just so infuriating, it really is. Personally, I think it's an abuse of power when a healthcare professional is also in an MLM company and they're using that opportunity in that healthcare setting to pitch and sell you supplements of some kind. Because the way I see it is that a doctor's office is a really intimate setting. It's a really private, vulnerable place to be. You and a healthcare professional alone together in a room where you're expressing your struggles, your hardships, your symptoms, your confusion. I'm really struggling. Here's what I've been going through. I just want answers. Can you please help me? I think it's natural for anybody to feel vulnerable in that kind of setting. And for that healthcare worker in their place of business, in the place that they are supposed to be the most professional to then turn around and abuse that power to try and sell you something on the side. It's just sick. It's gross. It should not be happening. And I'm sorry that this happened to you. And I hate the fact that this is not the first story of this kind to appear on my channel. Apparently this is more common of an experience than we were expecting. And I'm sorry that you were on the receiving end of that. This story says, hi, Hannah. Thank you for taking the time to read this email. Please do not use my name. I apologize for the lack of detail. I'm trying my best to not violate my non-disclosure agreement here. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. My interest is piqued. You have my attention. When there's an NDA involved, you know it's a sticky situation. This submission may be a little different in that I've never been in an MLM nor harassed to join one, but I am quite familiar with them having grown up in a small religious town. Cue me at 10 years old using Mary Kay anti-aging products because my mom's rep insisted I start young, but that's a story for another day. A little background. I'm an accountant pursuing a career in fraud investigation, so of course I'm already very much anti-MLM. I even once presented an analysis on the financial statements of Herbalife for a college course. We got to choose any publicly traded company and I thought it would be fun to share about the inner workings of a dumpster fire while spewing some anti-MLM rage onto my classmates. It was a grand time. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. During grad school, I was hired as an intern by an accounting firm in their litigation services department. Basically a group of accountants who do money math for lawyers. I mostly worked on divorce cases and contract disputes, but there was the occasional juicy fraud case too. One of the cases I worked on was a litigation action against a former top ranking rep by a well-known MLM. The firm I worked for was hired by the MLM's attorneys to determine the amount of lost profits caused by this rep leaving along with her large downline. The accounting firm had been previously contracted by the same MLM's lawyers for a similar case, and since that action was successful, we were hired a second time. The assignment was given to an intern, me, because the work the firm had done before mostly just needed to be replicated with a different Hun's data. Essentially, I was tasked with determining how much money this MLM would have made if the rep had not quit and convinced her team to follow. <laughs> what? Oh, this is good. This is really juicy. So what you're saying is there is a well-known MLM company out there who had one of their top earners, one of the top people in the pyramid, leave that company to go to a different company and she took her whole downline with her. And obviously company A, the original company, takes a huge financial hit from that. If one of your top earners picks up and moves somewhere else, that hurts you financially. And you're the person who has to kind of do that math and figure out how much the company lost because she left. Fascinating, oh my gosh. I didn't receive much information about the legal side of things or how everything shook out. My understanding was that the MLM claimed that the rep violated her contract by disclosing confidential information to her team, which caused them all to leave the company. Who knows whether this information was factual, whether she lied for her own benefit, or somewhere in between. Based on the evidence I saw, it appeared that there was a pre-planned coordinated effort on the rep's part, whereby she convinced virtually every everyone in her downline to follow her to another well-known MLM in a short span of time. Before everything went down, it seems that there was some built up tension with the former MLM and some negotiations with the MLM to which she switched. Of course, she joined the other MLM immediately in the high ranks because of the giant team she brought with her. On that note, I'm curious how this usually works. When someone with a downline quits an MLM, where do those people go? Are they absorbed by someone else? Maybe you know the answer about what is typical in these circumstances. I believe what is typical just off the top of my head is that if one individual person leaves an MLM, all those people in the downline below them kind of roll up to the next person. So that person's upline gets the rest of the downline. Of course, I don't have every policies and procedures from every company sitting in front of me right now, but I think that's generally how it works out. Like if you have everyone stacked on top of each other and one of those middle pieces cuts out, everyone below just kind of rolls up to the next person. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's typically how it works. But if you're curious about a specific company, that information will be in their policies and procedures. They'll have a whole section about it. They'll tell you exactly what happens in their company per their policy if someone decides to leave. As far as this case goes, it's very interesting because it appears like somebody took their entire downline with them. They took everyone in the pyramid below them to a different company. And I have to say, I am not surprised in the least that it sounds like the new company that they switched to potentially had some kind of negotiation like, hey, we're going to do this for you if you come to our company, whether that be a paycheck, a bonus, being placed in a higher rank, something of that nature. Because what is this whole story about? It's about money. It's about being a top earner in a company. Obviously, it's a numbers game where more people the merrier, more people in the company means more money for the people at the top of the company. More people in that scheme 
scheme means more money is being made for those people at the tippy tippy top. And I'm not just talking about the top of the pyramid. I'm talking like the CEOs, the people who founded the company, the people who started the scheme, okay? They make the most money. Those people, although they're not the ones building downlines themselves, they benefit the most from having a ton of people in their company. So if they catch wind that some top earner from this company over here is thinking about leaving because they have bad blood with that company, it's really not uncommon for other companies to poach them and say, hey, come over here. We're going to sweeten the deal a little bit. You're going to make us a pretty penny by bringing all those downline members with you. So we're willing to work out some kind of negotiation. That absolutely does happen. Anyway, back to the case. Unfortunately for this hun, the estimated proceeds lost totaled in the seven figures and the MLM intended to pursue this amount in damages against her. <laughs> I won't bore you with the math, but basically it took into account past data about the size of her team, how long recruits typically stay, how many people they recruit, purchasing volume, and so on. I'm not here to pick sides between an MLM and someone presumably manipulative enough to rise that high in the pyramid, but I do think that going after one person for that much money is scarily aggressive. It made me uncomfortable to work on the project, but I don't pick clients. I just do math. I wanted to send this message as a warning that even those rare few who do well in an MLM can be promptly ripped to shreds if there is a burned bridge. One month they can be handing you a microphone and the next suing you for millions. Regardless of the outcome, legal defense costs alone can be devastating. Beware, these companies are not your friends. Anyway, love your content. I agree it is quite bingeable. Keep up the good fight. Wishing your growing family nothing but love and happiness. I love it. I love unique stories like this with someone who kind of has an insider perspective or a really unique perspective on the situation. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sending this. Incredibly entertaining to read. And I love the fact that your story concludes with this warning that you know what, even though we don't know the result of this lawsuit, you're not saying the name of the company or the person, obviously for legal reasons, totally fine. But those things aren't really important. Okay. It's the principle. It's the example that this is setting that these companies do don't care about you. They care about the money you make them. And as soon as you don't make them any money, you're tossed to the wayside. They could not care less unless you lost them so much money that now they're trying to sue you for that amount of money. In that case, I guess they still kind of care about you, but not for the reasons you want them to care about you. Like you said, one month they're putting you on a pedestal and praising you. The next month they are suing you. Thank you so much for sending this in. I'm really appreciative for your unique perspective on this. This story says, hi, Hannah you can call me Gates. I have absolutely no idea how I found you actually. You just popped up on my YouTube feed one day while I was waiting to go out to dinner and I thought the idea of an MLM horror story sounded like an interesting video for the car ride. I'm glad I found you. I've learned so much. It's been months since, but it's always been a joy to see your new videos. Anyways, enough on that. We're both here for a horror story, right? I apologize for it being written the way it is. I'm an author, but I've never really written anything from my own perspective before. I've defaulted to writing it just as I would for any of my fictional works. I hope it reads nicely. Trigger warning for transphobia, homophobia, and mentions of anxiety. A bit of context for the later portion of my story. I am a trans man, but I haven't really started to transition aside from within a few social groups. My wonderful loving husband thankfully has always known me as my trans self and has never had an issue nor concern. My first tale starts in elementary school. I was the ripe age of eight and I was in third grade. Now I was an early bloomer. My first period that same year and my hormones went off the deep end. I developed horrible acne very young, cystic acne too. My parents had tried taking me to the doctor for medication and whatnot, but since I was so young, he hadn't wanted to do too much. I was put on a pill, but I've always had a hard time with those. I used to pretend to take it, but instead I would stick it in my back pocket before running off to catch the school bus. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> I never had many friends in school. I had undiagnosed autism and ADHD, and it was known by my peers as the kid with anger issues, or even more less the crybaby due to my tendency to tear up at a moment's notice. That's so sad. The name calling, the shaming for that. That's the sad part. I'm sorry that happened to you. Kids are ruthless, aren't they? My bullies ganged up on me one day, noticing a particularly bad whitehead on my face and surrounded me, calling me names until I cried, at which they laughed.
left. I hid under my desk until the bell rang. When class let out, my teacher held me back from lunch to speak with me. She'd always been a bit of a comfort for me. I trusted her and I would talk to her about everything I could. She asked me if I was all right and I just nodded dumbly. She then pulled a pamphlet of some sort out of her desk drawer. She held it out to me to take before sitting me down at the nearest desk. And she said to me, you know, they won't pick on you if you cover your acne up. Show this to your mom. She of course meant the pamphlet and have her pick out a concealer for you. You read that correctly. A teacher told an eight year old child to wear makeup. I started crying again, telling her that I didn't understand why I was so ugly and why everyone hated me. Oh my God, my heart. She told me, well, the makeup will make you pretty. I took the pamphlet home and showed my mother who reasonably outraged, held me from school the next day and quickly set up a parent teacher meeting. Good for her. I was transferred out of that teacher's class soon after, but to my knowledge, she is still teaching there a whopping 15 or so years later. Asking my mother if she remembered this event, she swears it had been Mary Kay. Of course, she threw the pamphlet away long ago, and my memory is definitely not that great to recall. Hearing that it was probably Mary Kay sounds perfectly reasonable to me, just given kind of the time period that this story took place and the fact that what she was pitching was a concealer. I feel like Mary Kay is kind of the largest MLM that sells cosmetics in particular, so this makes perfect sense to me that it probably was Mary Kay. Regardless of what company it was, it's shocking to see a teacher, someone of status in your eyes, right? An authority figure, someone you look up to, someone who is responsible for your well-being for many hours out of the day to have her sit you down one-on-one -on -one and literally tell you that if you don't want to get picked on by the other kids at school, you're going to need to start wearing makeup and here's a pamphlet to take home to your mom so she can buy it for you. That is absolutely not the correct course of action that a teacher should be taking in this situation. I think we all know that. Why are we not pulling aside the bullies? Why are we not having a conversation with the people who are picking on you. And instead she's having a conversation with you telling you how you can change yourself so that you won't be bullied. That is completely unacceptable. And for her to think that that's acceptable all in the name of making a sale for her Mary Kay business is crushing to your eight year old ego. Clearly you've remembered it 15 years later, it still had an impact on you. Speaking from my own experience as someone who has their teaching credentials and has worked in schools, particularly at this elementary level, generally speaking, kids love their teachers. Kids look up to their teachers. They respect their teachers. And for a teacher to tell a young student that they are responsible for their own victimization and their own bullying situation. <laughs> Stab me in the heart and twist it, why don't you? That bothers me so much. And for what? To make a few dollars of commission on the sale of a concealer? Like, gross. Get out of here with that. My second story revolves around Arbonne. Now, I'm a very anxious person just in general. I hate doing most things alone, even just grocery shopping, but obviously I can't always have company. Sometimes I sadly do have to be an adult and go buy my own groceries all by myself like a big boy. It really is sad, isn't it? I hate going grocery shopping by myself too. So picture me in Walmart. I'm a huge nerd and I was feeling particularly lazy this day. So of course I'm dressed in Pokemon pajama bottoms and a garish Transformers shirt. By no means was I the pinnacle of feminine beauty. What with my bangs sticking in every cardinal direction and a big old scab on the end of my nose from a spot of cystic acne that had burst in my turbulent sleep the night prior. And Anyways, so I'm in the dairy section. I love food, especially cheese. I had a hankering for something rich and cheesy all week. My plans had been to buy some goat cheese goodness to stuff into dough alongside mushrooms and onion. I'm minding my own cheesy nerdy business when a lady comes up beside me. Me being me and anxious, I immediately apologize to her for being in the way and I sidestep from her. She takes one look at me, long, looking up and down. Just as I feel my anxiety starting to rise to a boiling point, she goes, your pants are cute. I awkwardly say thank you and try to stumble away, already rerouting my shopping trip in my brain. She then asks where I'd gotten them. I say my friend had made them for me for a birthday. My friends are great, all very talented. That's one of those Pikachus, right? She asks me. It pains me when people lump all Pokemon as Pikachus, but I nod at her and try to hurry off. But then she goes, are you all right? Ever the brilliant one, I reply again saying yes. She says, oh, well, I was just asking because you have scars 
scars and scabs all over your face. Now, from having cystic acne, I have developed scars on my cheeks and temples. They're quite bad. I once had a kid call me Crater Face, another called me Pizza Face. Again, with the name calling, come on people. Just to reiterate, kids are brutal. <laughs> I haven't grown out of my crying issue. Immediately, I start to tear up. I go to walk away and she starts calling behind me. I run a makeup business. I could help you with that. Acne is so simple to clear up. I'm ignoring her, but I notice that her voice is not getting quieter as I walk away. No, this woman actually follows me across the store and into the baby food aisle. I don't actually have a baby, but I do have pets who require fruits and vegetables mixed into their diet. I give them organic baby food as treats from time to time. She then starts to go on about how my acne is probably just from my lack of hygiene. Note again, my messy hair. She tries to literally thrust some sort of catalog into my face, the page on some sort of makeup product. I do not know anything about makeup. Upon later investigation with my husband's help, I would discover this particular product would be an Arbon item. Quote, the Real Conceal Liquid Concealer. What a dumb name. <laughs> Angry now, I tell her, look lady, I'm just here to buy groceries. If I wanted makeup, I would go to the effing Sally Beauty across the street. Besides, I don't even like makeup. She looked aghast, but every young lady has to like makeup. In a fit of blinded fury, I quickly replied, I'm not a girl. She quickly catches on to my drift and from there she flies off the handle. I suddenly get called every homophobic slur in the book. She even makes a comment about quote, hoping my baby gets taken away. Again, no human baby, just scaly ones who liked mashed pumpkin and banana. I stood there dumbfounded as I listened to her go off about good Christian values and about how the gays are ruining the world. The last bit I heard from her was something along the lines of clearly God is punishing you by making you so ugly, no one would ever want to date you, man or woman. Don't love it. Nope. Quickly, I grab the mashed pumpkin and hurry to the self-checkout. I can't imagine how someone could go from wanting to sell makeup to a horrible tirade like that. Imagine being so hateful. Couldn't be me. The worst part, I didn't even get my cheese. No, <laughs> the whole reason you were there, right? The one thing you were really looking forward to buying and you didn't even get to it. That sucks. <laughs> Anyways, moral of the story, don't use people's appearance against them to try and sell your MLM. That's just a real stinky move. And thank you for reading my long-winded email and please give your babies, human and furry, all of the kisses. I hope maternity leave is being kind to you and that your life as a new parent is going smoothly. Keep up the good fight. The information you share is boundless. Yeah, I think the moral of your story here is a great one. Don't use people's appearance against them to try and sell something to them. It's not a good strategy. That will never make sense to me either. Like, oh, you're really looking rough. I have a product for you. Insult somebody before you expect them to give you their money is not typically a great strategy. I wouldn't recommend it. And I want to apologize on behalf of this person for the things that she said to you and the way that she treated you, because this is one thing I'll never understand. I will never understand the rage that some people have towards other human beings for simply existing and minding their own business. It appears that in every aspect of this story, you were just trying to stay out of the way, do your own thing, get your cheese to fulfill your craving. You're trying to give her space. You're trying to go to different parts of the store. You're trying to dodge all of her questions and just get out of there and get her to leave you alone. And she's relentless. And in the end, what is she resorting to? Hateful, personal insults towards you and throwing a public tantrum because she didn't get what she wanted, which is a sale. Please, please know that is a them problem and that is not a you problem. And you did not deserve that. And I apologize on her behalf. I really appreciate you sending in this story. You bring up a lot of important points. Firstly, don't be a teacher trying to sell makeup to eight-year-olds. And secondly, don't be a relentless Arbon hun chasing people down in a Walmart and then yell derogatory things at them when you don't get what you want. Very infuriating on many levels, but I really appreciate you taking the time to share your stories with us. This story says, hey Hannah, my name is Morgan. Feel free to use my name. I've been a longtime subscriber and adore your content. You're certainly my favorite YouTube channel. Thank you so 
much. Wow, out of all of YouTube, this channel's your favorite. That's a huge compliment. Thank you very much. I refresh my page every day to see if you posted anything. I've been sitting on this for about three years now, and I think it's time to share my story. I grew up surrounded by MLMs. My mom is an avid buyer, thankfully not seller. She'd been on Facebook for hours on end buying LuLaRoe, asking if I wanted anything. She bought from Norwex, Pampered Chef, Mary Kay, 31 bags, and currently Melaleuca. I remember being as young as 10 and going to all of her friends' parties with her. Thankfully, she now knows the dangers of being in an MLM and donated those hideous leggings, but continues to buy from them to support her friends. I've been anti-MLM since college. Turns out when you go to a Bible college, tons of your old classmates turn into MLM huns. I had been cold messaged and pitched over and over from the hair girlies, mostly Monate, so much that I put, quote, not here to join your pyramid schemes in my Insta bio. <laughs> Even though I've been avidly anti-MLM, I almost got sucked in. Here's the story. My husband and I had just gotten married and I moved up from North down to Virginia. At the time, he was working full-time and in school and I had a part-time job babysitting, but I was on the hunt for something more full-time and stable. I was in the bathroom of the college he attended while I was waiting for him to finish a class. A woman approached me. She definitely looked too old for college, but I thought that maybe she was a teacher. She complimented my sweater and started up a conversation as we were washing our hands. I have horrible social anxiety, but she was pleasant. I had mentioned my husband and I had been looking for better jobs and she lit up. She said her and her husband work for a great company and were looking to mentor others to join them. Amway, that's my call. This sounds so much like Amway. The fact that it's two people together in a couple doing the business together and also calling it mentoring others. Those are two huge red flags for Amway. I don't know why I didn't see this as a red flag. Maybe it was because I just wanted to get out of there, but I gave her my number. She texted me later that her husband wanted to meet me and my husband. So we met at the local Starbucks. My husband was wary, but we went. We got in line for coffee and saw them sitting at the middle table in the cafe. They motioned over to us so we got out of line. I thought it was weird that they didn't actually get anything to drink and was pissed that we drove to meet them for coffee and never actually got coffee. What? I would be pissed too. And how uncomfortable is that to go to a coffee shop and not actually be a paying customer of that coffee shop? You're just sitting down taking up a table for your pyramid scheme pitch. Like that just seems kind of disrespectful, right? If you're gonna use that venue for that amount of time, at least be a paying customer. I feel like that's just basic common knowledge. You would never go to a restaurant, take up a table, sit down with someone, have a full-blown conversation, and then leave without ordering anything. That's weird. Tell me that's weird, please. He rambled on and on about how most Americans work for a boss. The rest work for themselves, and then they work for each other. He drew some grid that made no sense. My husband and I both tend to be pretty direct. We asked a handful of times what the work would look like, what the pay would be, and what the company name was. Each time, they danced around the the subject. After about an hour, he gave us a book to go home with because we quote, weren't understanding what he was saying. <laughs> the wife texted me about a week later asking if we could meet again to go over the book. At this point, I didn't think it was a pyramid scheme, but my husband and I both felt like it had to be a scam of some sort. Out of pure curiosity and some frustration that the husband wasn't being direct with us, we agreed to meet again. We walked into Starbucks again. No actual coffee was had, and I sort of lied that we had read the book. I skimmed it in the car and I gave him a quick synopsis of what I got from it. Another 20 minutes of clueless rambling about being millionaires went on. You can make as much as you want. You will just be buying products you can already buy. My husband was over it and just told him to straight up tell us the name of the company. The guy told us, well, I don't think you two would be a good fit. We handed him his dumb book and left. Here's where it gets crazy. I looked them up on Facebook and I found out that they work for, you guessed it, Amway. I I did guess it. I did, for the record. I had a good laugh that me, avidly anti-MLM, would go to this pitch not once, but twice. I thought it was so ironic that I was telling a local friend of mine who also happens to be very anti-MLM about it. As I'm recounting the story, she gets out her phone and she turns it and says, is this them? I was shocked and said, yes, how did you know? Turns out that her and her husband got pitched by them and met up with them five times. Thankfully, they noticed the red flags and didn't get suckered in. 
then. Since then, they have tried to start conversations with me and my husband twice in Target. They must try and recruit so many people that they eventually forget faces. You're kidding. So wait, you met up with them two separate times at Starbucks. It sounds like this was maybe like an hour and a half of your life that you wasted on them. And since then, they've pitched you two more times in a different location and didn't put the pieces together that they'd already had a full-blown conversation with you in Starbucks and given you a book to go home and read and then come back and discuss it with them at a later date. I mean, I'm not great with names and faces and that kind of thing, but if I'm sitting down and talking to somebody face-to-face, for like an hour and a half of my time, I would like to think that I would remember that person, right? Would you? Maybe you wouldn't remember their name or that whole conversation you had with them or whatever, but you would at least see them as a little bit familiar, would you not? That's bizarre to me. You know that they've talked to every single human being they ever come in contact with if they can't seem to put the pieces together that they've already pitched you twice before. If you're in Lynchburg, Virginia, be on alert for a man in a suit and his redhead wife wandering around the college campus campus and Target. I now know better, but I still get pitched in my DMs often as I run a fashion and beauty blog focusing on budget-friendly living to help women look great while not breaking the bank. Love that. It says you can check it out at underscore nifty underscore and underscore thrifty on IG. Thanks to your content, I know how to defend the pro MLM arguments and that no is a full sentence. Keep up the good work and hoping you have a safe delivery. Motherhood is amazing. Thank you for all you do to further this movement. And thank you for being here and Thank you for writing out a story. I think your story really speaks to the fact that when you're in an MLM, particularly Amway that likes to pitch in person, every person you come in contact with is seen as an opportunity. They approach you with dollar signs in their eyes. They see you as a way for them to build their downline and therefore make more money. So much so that apparently they will pitch the same people multiple times and not even realize it. That is the piece of your story that is so telling. Very entertaining. I'm so glad you did not get get sucked in at the end of the day and thank you for writing in your story. This one says, hi Hannah, I've always thought about writing to you as I've had many encounters with MLMs. However, ever since I've been old enough to join, I've pretty much been anti-MLM thanks to OG anti-MLM content like Kiki Chanel. I'm absolutely obsessed with your channel by the way, but oh my god, I just had the most stressful day of my life and I immediately knew I wanted to write to you. I'm sitting at my desk at work typing this out almost in real time. Love it. My boyfriend and I have been dating for about eight months now. We met at our last job. I work in hotel sales and he is a server. He has worked many serving positions and at the time he was a banquet server for the hotel. He now works as a server for an upscale ramen restaurant. It's his day off today and as I'm leaving for work, he begins to tell me about this woman he was serving the other day. He started the story with, she asked for my number and my mind immediately jumped to, oh, she was flirting with him. My boyfriend is very attractive and it's not uncommon for him to be hit on, but he's very loyal and trustworthy and always is quick to tell women that he has a girlfriend, so this never bothers me. However, he tells me that the woman's boyfriend was sitting right next to her and that she actually wasn't flirting with him, but thought that he was an amazing server with a great work ethic and wanted to interview him for an opportunity. As soon as he said the word opportunity, alarm bells started going off. He said that he had an interview with her at 1 p.m. today. I didn't want to come off as unsupportive, so I just kissed him on the head and told him good luck, but please be careful. As soon as I got to work, I told my colleagues about the situation and they also were concerned. We have each other's location. So at about 1230, I started incessantly checking his location. He was on the road for about 30 minutes until he made a stop at one building. Being the concerned, anxious person that I am, I scrolled in to see the name of the street. I immediately searched up the name of the street and what's the first building name that popped up? Primerica. My heart skipped a beat and I started yelling in my office. I knew it. I knew it. I went back and forth in my head as to whether or not I should text him to get out. But my boyfriend is very intelligent and very logical. So I had to reassure myself that he would pick up on the red flags. I decided not to text him, but I knew that he would call me after the interview. So once again, like an insane person, I began looking up Primerica facts and scouring their website. Not insane, smart, savvy. 
While I couldn't find their full income disclosure statement, I was able to find something on their website that reps only made $7,400 on average in 2022, which seems a little high for an MLM. <laughs> that's funny because you see $7,400 for the whole year and you think that's nothing, especially for something that's supposed to be your full-time job. That's nowhere near a full-time income. That's nowhere near even a part-time minimum wage income. However, knowing what we know about MLMs and having looked at lots of income disclosures, this actually kind of is on the high end for an MLM. However, you're specifying that this is the average. So if that's the average for all the reps in Primerica in the year 2022, remember that that's including the people who made no money at all, plus the people who made millions. Averages are really misleading in the context of MLM income disclosures because it's incorporating all of that data into one. What would be more representative of what most people make is if we look at the median. So we're taking the person who made zero and the person who made the most money and we're finding that person in the middle of that data set and we're seeing what did that person make think of it this way if you have a hundred people in an MLM 99 of them made nothing but that one person made a hundred bucks if you average out that data set it's gonna tell you that on average everybody made a dollar which is not true that's not representative of what's really going on but if you take all those data points and you line them up and you find that person in the middle you'll see that the middle person made zero dollars that gives us a much clearer picture of what most people in the company are actually making. So the point in saying all of that is that averages are not very accurate when we're looking at MLMs. So to say that $7,400 on average in 2022 is a little bit high, I would say that that's an accurate statement. It probably does seem a little bit high because <laughs> that's the same thing as having 99 people who made nothing and one person make a hundred bucks and then averaging it to say that everyone made a dollar. That's not accurate. That's a little high. Sorry, for that little tangent. I just think that's really fascinating because I think we tend to look at the averages. On average, people made this much money. On average, this. On average, that. And that gives us some kind of idea of what's going on. But in the case of income disclosures, what you really want to be looking at is the median, but not every company gives you the median. That's another thing. More commonly, they'll just give us the averages. And that's because those figures are more favorable. Okay, math lesson over. Back to the story. Anyway, he did end up calling me. He started started off by telling me that he put me down as a reference since I'm in sales and I couldn't help but think what nasty things I wanted to say to the woman if she did actually end up calling me. He began to start to explain the structure of the business as it was explained to him. One thing that stood out to him was that she had him start off by telling her about his dreams and aspirations. She then went on to explain the business structure. He told me that every time he had a question about the business, instead of giving him a straightforward answer, she would give him an answer that tied back into his goals and aspirations aspirations. I'm glad that he was able to clock how manipulative that was. I told him that while I thought he would be a great salesperson at a legitimate business, I would have a hard time supporting him being a Primerica rep. I told him that I just do not support MLMs whatsoever. While the whole situation was extremely stressful, the worst part of the day was how crazy I felt my reaction was compared to others. I told my best friend and two of my colleagues about it. Both my friend and my colleague said something along the lines of, some people are actually really successful and make really good money. You never know, that could be your boyfriend. It infuriated me. Not only is it highly unlikely, but even if he were to become successful, at what cost? I know that not everyone is consumed with anti-MLM content like me, but do people seriously still think like this? Yeah. Mm-hmm, they do. <laughs> Hate to break it to you, but yes, anti-MLM is a relatively small bubble still. Obviously, my life is consumed with it, your life is consumed with it if you consume a lot of that content, but I would venture to say that the average person probably doesn't really have a strong opinion one way or the other, pro or anti-MLM. It kind of seems like generally people have a neutral opinion on MLMs, typically because they don't know much about the business structure. All they know is what they've seen and heard through the grapevine about, oh yeah, that's that business model where you recruit people and you sell things on social media to your friends and family. And some people really can make it work. I've heard success stories before. The average person is not spending hours a day watching MLM horror story videos on YouTube. It would be great if they did, but that's not the reality. I would say that a lot of people out there don't know enough about MLMs to have a strong opinion one side or the other. And now that I'm saying all of this out loud, it kind of almost feels like for those neutral 
people out there, it's kind of like a race to get information to them first, right? We can only hope that these neutral people out there come across anti-MLM content first and they learn about how harmful the business structure is first before they get pitched for it and before they fall victim to it. That's kind of an interesting way to look at it, isn't it? I had never really thought about it like that until this very moment. But to your point, do people seriously still think like this? Yes, unfortunately they do. Anyway, it doesn't sound like he's gonna end up doing it. Thank God. I'm glad that my boyfriend is intelligent enough to pick up on red flags and manipulation tactics. But had it been just a few years prior when he was younger and more naive, I'm not sure if it would have been the same story. Thank you for all you do. I deeply appreciate and respect your content. Congrats on your new baby and give the cats kisses for me. Thank you. That's very sweet. I appreciate that. And I think it's all also really cool that you're writing this email, like you said, in real time almost. This isn't recounting an experience from years ago, although I love those stories too. This is like, here's what's happening in my life today. My boyfriend almost joined Primerica. How wild is this? I think that's really cool. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to send in this story and to let us know that hopefully, thank goodness, your boyfriend is not going to fall victim to Primerica. <laughs> and with that, that's all the MLM horror stories I have for you for this video today. Again, if you have your own story that you would like to have considered for a video, my inbox is always open. It's really easy to send me your story. It's just an email. And thanks again to Paired for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out the link in the description box below to get 25% off Paired Premium. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.